magnify your name, Lord God. Right now, God, we press into your presence, God. In your presence, there's fullness of joy. In your presence, God, there's a treasure of forevermore, God. So right here, God, we want to be in your presence, God. Nothing else matters in your presence, God. We feel healing in our presence, God. We feel safety in your presence, God. We feel joy in your presence, God. So, God, you are welcome in this place. Somebody open up your mouth wherever you are. Just welcome the King of Kings. He is here to inhabit your praise right now. He is here to inhabit your worship right now. So, right now, we take a moment and zone in our worship on our Father. We take a moment and zone in our worship on our King. Because he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. I live in hope. Short presence. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love, where my heart becomes free. All my shame is undone. It's your presence, Lord. Say, Holy Spirit. Somebody pray this morning to be overcome by the presence. Come fill our hearts, oh God, with your presence.
welcome in our nation, God. You're welcome in our world, oh God. Come flood this place and fill this atmosphere with your glory, God. 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 morning for joining with us. Uh, we are New Life in the City. I thank God for this opportunity to just be with you, to just come before you. Oh my God, I miss church. I miss being in physical church. I'm telling you, if I was in church this morning, I would ask the praise team to give me another worship song or another slither, as I call it, uh, of, of, of some song that they sung in the past. But this morning, I just want to welcome you uh, to this broadcast. God is so good. Do me a favor, those of you that are watching, I want you to share, share this, uh, this broadcast so that your friends can also be blessed by it. This morning, we are New Life in the City, and we wanna just thank you for, this is our Sunday morning service. I truly thank God for you, the listening audience. As you know, we are in our home today. We thank God uh, we're exercising social distancing, but we're going to be opening back up soon. I thank God for that. 
uh, but right now you are here and God has a word for you. God has a word specifically for you. So this morning, I just want you to relax. I want you to sit back wherever you are, whether you're in your living room, whether you're in your bedroom, whether you're in your car this morning. Uh, just tune your, your spirit uh, to the word. Tune your spirit to God. Just say deep down inside, God, I know that you have a word from me. Oh God, where else can I go? You have the words of life. And indeed, God has the words of life for you. Do you believe that? This morning, I'm going to bring before you uh, none other than our co-pastor. Uh, she is my wife, my girlfriend, my boo, whatever you want to call her. But I call her, uh, I, I can't tell you my nicknames for her, but she's anointed, she's appointed. I bring before you the ministry gift of none other than Pastor Shaquilla Smith. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that, Pastor Isaac. Though we can't give our names, our, our private names out, amen. But I thank God to be before you this morning. Um, I'm honored to be able to bring a word to the body, and I'm also myself. And I know that God will speak this morning, amen. So I, I ask you to tune your, your radio dial um, to WORD. And we're going to jump right into the word, but we're going to start off with prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for your presence right here, right now. We glorify you. We thank you, Lord God. We don't take for granted that you are with us this moment. And Lord God, we pray, oh Lord God, as we sit at your table to receive from you, we ask that you would show up and show out. We ask that you would have your way, God. Speak to our hearts, O oh Lord God. Father God, and give us understanding of your word, Lord God. So we thank you, Lord God, and we give you glory and honor for that which is to be said. Allow me to be your mouthpiece, Lord God. You know what is on the heart of your people and what they need in this hour. So guide my tongue, Lord God, that I will speak the words, O oh Lord God, that will bring them encouragement, Lord God, to inspire some Lord God, and to, to help, Lord God, others to get through from A to B, from moment to moment, from day to day, Lord God, during what we're going through right now. So, Father, I don't take this moment for granted, but I am grateful, Lord God, that you would use me. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Some of you all may have already saw in the in the title bar, um, the title of this message. But I just want to encourage everyone this morning, even in our hour of trouble during this season, this pandemic, and, 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 and not only the pandemic, but some of the fires that may be going on in our houses, in our relationships, and in, in, in many things that we may do, you know, we're not calm within ourselves. Uh, we feel that we are lacking. We feel that we're less than um, whatever may be going on because there are many issues going on besides the pandemic. What we don't want to is lose our trust in God. We don't want to lose our trust in God. Um, when others become fearful, when we become fearful, the first thing we begin to do is to question, is God still God? Is God still with us? I'm here to tell you that God is a near and a present help. And yes, he is still with us through the good and the bad. We just recognize it sometimes when it's in the good, we can say, God, you're good. Oh, I love the Lord. He's just so good to me. But when things are not going so good, can you still say, God, you're good. God, you're good. When things happen that we don't understand and, 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 and things happen that cause us pain and grief, we have a decision to make in that moment. Are you going to allow a, a setback or tragedy or a pandemic steal the blessings that God has for us? Or are we going to stand firm and declare that God is still good no matter what? No matter, it may hurt, but 
God, you're still good. God, you're still good. And that's what we constantly want to keep before us. You know, all of us have had our, have had or having, you know, tragedy or some hurt in our life. And I remember a time when my mother was getting ready to transition to be with the Lord. And that was a, a hard, very hard time for me. And in that moment, I saw so many things happen with my mom on her last week of life. And oh my God, it was, it was hard. It was a blessing. I look back at it now and I say, God, I thank you that I was there. And, and, and I, I want to bless God because I was also blessed with the, uh, I saw an interview with Tony Evans and many of you all know that he lost his wife recently. And, and in that video, some of the same things that he said his wife was doing in the last days of her life, my mother did those things. And, but one thing that we have to be mindful of, because see, at that time, that was a, a, a hardship for me at that time because I didn't want to lose my mother. And he says in that last days, his wife expressed certain things. You know, um, we've seen her parents and my mother saw her parents. And, and one of the things that he said his wife um, said was, there was, they want to give me an award. And, and I remember my mom in her last days, sitting up on the bed and reaching out and calling for her mother. And it's like she sees her mother and her father and she's reaching out for them and wanting to go. And I remember that moment when she said, it's time for me to go, y'all gotta release me. She was ready, but we wanna hold her here. And I said, oh my God, it was one of the hardest decisions. But I remember in the last days, I whispered in her ear, and I said, Mom, I release you. I said, it's going to be the hardest thing that I ever have to, to do. But I know it's the right decision because that's what you want. And I don't want to be selfish. And I said, Mom, but I want you to know I'm going to cry. It's going to hurt because I'm going to miss your physical body hugging me, holding my hands. I thought my mother had the most beautiful hands holding your hands and rubbing you I'm gonna miss that so I said mom I just want you to know I'm gonna cry but I'm gonna be all right because one thing that I knew about my mother because she knew that me and my husband was in ministry ministry must go on and so that was one of the things that blessed me when Dr. Tony Evans was giving his testimony his wife said ministry must go on don't let this set you back because I'm ready to go. Can you let me go? But ministry must go on. Don't get so downtrodden that you don't do what God called you to do. And I thank God for that. I would never forget that moment. Never forget that moment when my mother told me what was important. She was going home to her father. And one day I want to go home with my father. So I'm here to tell you, even during that time, which was the hardest thing that I have to had to do and deal with, he is still God. He is still God. No matter what you may go through in your life, he's still God. In 1 Peter 5, 7, in a reading in the Amplified, it says, casting all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, and all your concerns, once and for all, it says, on him. For he cares about you. He cares with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. And then in Psalms 55, 22, it says, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. God is able to keep you. So a lot of things we may not understand, but I won't question you, God, because I know that you're in control. Amen. So we have to always keep in mind God is in control and God knows what he's doing. That word care. I looked up that word care and it says to, to feel interest or concern. But it's also a suffering in the mind when you're constantly caring because it's also worrying. It's grief. So it's a suffering in your mind. Care 
implies oppression of the mind, weighed down by responsibility or disquieted by apprehension. So cares, if you're constantly worrying about and cares and what's going on and why and, and why this got to happen and God, that's not right. And God, why, when, God, are you still God? And Lord, I don't know if I can trust you. And it begins to weigh on your mind. It's a suffering of the mind. But God, come. See, God has already told us that we're going to have trials and tribulation. Things are not going to always be as we think they should be. But God is so good. God is still God. He said, be of good cheer. My children, I have already overcome the world. So everything you can ever go through or will go through, God has already overcome it. And he will help you through it. I love this verse, Isaiah 41, 10. It says, so do not fear, for I am with you. That's a sermon all in itself. Do not fear because I'm with you. Remember that verse in Psalms 23? Yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. It's a lot to be said when God is with you. He's not just on your side, but he is with you, leading and guiding you. Isaiah 41 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. Do not worry. Do not care. For I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. Oh my God. And he says, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God got you. Doesn't mean that everything is going to always look good and always go the way you think it should go. No, because the way that we should go is not in us. We have a way that we think we should go. And if we want God to go along with every decision that we think is right, how would this world be? God knows what's best for us. Amen. This encouraged me so much. And ultimately, the Lord wants to impart to us, impart to us through this verse is that we should not be afraid. We should not be afraid, no matter what happened, no matter the pandemic, no matter the sickness, no matter the illness. We all come to leave one day. We have an expiration day, but we are to rejoice to know where they're going. But he says, do not be afraid. Don't fret because I'm with you. I will strengthen you. I will be with you. I am Jehovah Shammah. I am the God that is there. Thank you, God. One reason why God warns us against the fears and the worries and things that tries to set us back because it was short circuit, the answered prayers and blessings that he has for us. There are some things you've been believing God for. And there are some things you've been praying for, you've been standing for. But a lot of times we allow, allow the concerns and the worries and the fear to set us back and short circuit what God wants to give us. We got to release it all to him and surrender to God. God is able to keep us. Amen. Amen. So with that being said, I'm going to bring forth. There are three things that really the enemy uses as a weapon to keep us from going forward in the things of God to keep us back. And I want to bring them before you and I want to make us aware some know already, but I want you to be blessed. And, and the enemy knows, you see, you give them a TKO from the knowledge you know. He said, my people, God says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So it's what you know. So I want you to open up your ears and your heart. Amen. And I want to bless you with this. One of the one of the, uh, well, I'm going to give you all three now, though. One of the weapons, the powerful, popular weapons that the enemy uses is fear. Yes, we know fear. Fear is a lot to say about fear. Even in this time when the pandemic came, a lot was fearful. A lot of people was fearful because it's like, Lord, I don't want it. I want my family. I got Lord God, God. But if give them to God, God is able to keep them just as he's able to keep you. Another one, anxiety. And worry now anxiety and worry are kind of go hand in hand and we're going to talk about that a little bit more but we're going to start with fear because that's the more popular one that the enemy uses 
He keeps you from doing ministry because of fear. He keeps you, keeps you from getting that job that is for you because of fear. He keeps you from going forth and doing what you know you should do because fear. You know how sometimes we, we make excuses for doing things that we know we should do and things that we want to do. We make excuses for it because fear's job is to keep us back. So fear is an emotional response induced by a perceived threat that causes a change in the brain and organ function as well as our behavior. Fear arises with the threat of harm, either physical, either emotional, psychological, real, or imagined. So it puts something before you that's not even real, but it kind of gets in your psyche. So he may show you, oh, you ain't all that. But you're going to get up and say a speech. What they want to hear from you. You ain't got nothing to say. Ain't nothing important. Whatever it may be. Or oh, that pandemic is going to get your family. You watch. They keep going out. It's going to get your family. So the devil speaks to us. But I want to encourage you today. Put them in the hands of God and rest. Because God is able to take care of us and keep us. Amen. So I want to encourage you. I know that there has been some that have lost their lives and my condolences goes out to their family due to this pandemic. But I want you to continue to trust God because he's still God. Amen. Amen. And God wants to bless you. God wants to have your back and be there for you. God wants to bring everything together for your good just because you love him. Amen. Amen. So in Isaiah 43, 1, 1, it says, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. Now that word, redeemed. That word, redeemed. Let's talk about that word. That word, redeemed, says to buy back. So he has bought us back. Remember, the enemy, we don't belong to the enemy. Once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have been bought with a price and you belong to him. So he has bought you back. You don't belong to the enemy. Amen. See, the enemy can't do nothing to you that you don't allow and you don't let him. But he will come and he will speak in your head. And he will try to get your attention because once he distracts you and get you to turn away from that which you know God is calling you to, he gets you to turn away and then he will get you and lure you outside of the umbrella of God. That's his job. Amen. But he can't force you to do anything. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I've been bought with a price. It says redeem is to free from what distresses are or harm you. To be redeemed, it frees you from what distresses you or harm you. It's to release you from blame or debt. Oh, what was your debt? You may say, I done did some things when I'm in the world. God can't, God ain't, he ain't gonna want nothing to do with me. I done messed up. I done did some crazy things out there. But pastor, you don't even understand. You wouldn't even be standing here talking to me. I'm so messed up in the head. I'm so messed up. I'm, I'm tore up from the flow up. But God has redeemed you. He says, fear not. For I have redeemed you. Yes. Redeem also means to free from the consequences of sin. So no matter what, I can't say your sin bigger than my sin or my sin bigger than your sin. Sin is sin. He has redeemed us. Yes. He has saved us. He has freed us from the consequences of sin. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the thing is coming down on yourself. Oh, no. That's what the enemy wants. But God wants to bless you. Am I encouraging you this morning? I pray I am. I pray I am. Amen. The phrase fear is not is, is used at least 80 times in the Bible. 80 times. So it makes me think God was trying to get a message to us. Now, you know, the Bible was written thousands of years ago. 80 times in the Bible, the phrase fear not is used. Most likely... Because he, he knows that the enemy uses fear to decrease our hope and to limit our victories. 
So God wants us to know, don't fear. Don't fear. He holds you hostage. The enemy. Now, see, I'm talking about Christians. I'm talking about Christians. He will hold you hostage. You may say, well, as a Christian, you have access to so much because of the power of the living God lives on the inside of you. And you can say, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me all day long. You can say it. But if you allow fear to keep you hostage, you won't go forth in the things of God. So God don't want you to be hostage, my brother, my sister. God wants you to be free and have liberty and go forth in the things of God, letting nothing hold you back, nothing that you see, nothing on the outside to deter you from what God has for you and for you to walk in. Be blessed and receive that. Amen. God wants us to, if you have a problem with fear, you want to search the word of God and say, Lord, help me so that I won't be so fearful so that I can step into things of God. There is freedom. There is liberty in that. Amen. Amen. Unchecked fear will cause you to limit or question even your beliefs. We all believe in God, but if we don't put fear in check, you will begin to, to question, is there really a God? Is he really living on the inside of me? Is he really wanting to take care of me? So we have to get fear in check. Amen. Let's look what it says in John 14, 27 in the Amplified. It says, peace I leave with you. God wants us to have peace, my brothers, my sisters. My perfect peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. It says, do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. No pandemic, nothing. Let, not letting your heart be afraid. It says, let my peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength for every challenge. Some of you all may say, is this a challenge? Yes, it is. It is. It, it's a challenge because you don't want your loved ones to get sick. You don't want your friends and family. You don't want them to get sick. Amen. So you, you say, Lord God, I need your peace. Because see, once you put them in the hands of God, you say, God, I, I just need peace. I can let it go. I need to let it go. God says, let my peace, my perfect peace, calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength for every challenge. So let's look at this verse um, and you, you all know the story about the storm rages. We're not going to turn to it, but you know, you know the story when the disciples was in the sea of Galilee and, and they was going to the other side, okay, to the other side. Um, and, and, and before they went, God did some teachings and he did teaching of the parable of the seed and then of the parable of the mustard seed. So he was teaching them about the seed and throwing the seeds out and eventually it grows and you never know what that seed has a potential in. But I would see it as faith, throwing that seed out. And then one day you see that, that thing grow. So God was giving them some, a, a parable, but it was a message. So it was almost like, okay, you're going to be tested in what we just taught you on. So he got in the boat with the disciples and it says in Mark 4 35 that he said, let's go over to the other side. Now Jesus knew he had an assignment, but how many of you all know that when you have an assignment, the enemy will always try to distract and deter you. Now Jesus was about his father's business, going and healing and curing and laying hands and speaking. And, and so he had an assignment. As you read on, you see that he had to deal with the demonic spirit, you know, on the other side. Not a spirit, a person on the other side. So he knew, okay, I'm going and this is what I have to do. And when you know you're on an assignment for God, nothing's going to happen to you. God got you because that assignment has to get completed by you. Amen. So he said, let us go to the other side. And as soon as they set sail, the furious storm erupted. The winds begin to blow and howl and the waves crashing up on the boat. And, and it seemed to threaten that they were going to be capsized. And the disciples cried out in absolute fear, teacher, because he just taught them, right? Don't you care if we drown? Come on, brother. You, this boat is going off the 
I mean, it is about to be capsized and you resting, you sleeping. And see, if you look at today, what God wants us to do, because see, remember he says, I've overcome the world. So this was a test in time and he wants us to adapt this and see right now today, this may be a storm that's going on in this nation with the pandemic. It's a storm, and this is not the first time. He's saying, don't you, why are you afraid? And that was his response to his disciples. Why are you afraid? So what made the disciples so fearful? Was it the storm? Was it the winds? Was it the waves? The boat being tossed to and fro? What got them so fearful? Because those things that happen, they're, they're a factor, but it was the external things that, it, that vehicles it to fear. So there are some things that has, has to come about to bring about the fear in your life. You see, fear is not a motivating factor until it gets on the inside of you. So it doesn't, it doesn't motivate you in anything until it gets inside of you. So there are some things that has to happen to get you to a point of fear. Amen. Fear causes you to lose your focus. So if you're focusing on God, Fear has to do some things to get you to turn, to, to look at, oh no, 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 no. Keep your eyes on God. Okay, what's, oh my God, what's, so the thing is we got to keep our focus on God. Yeah. Keep your focus on God. God is the word, okay? So now keep your eyes on the word of God. Amen. In the beginning, was the word, you know that verse, and the word was with God and the word was God. Keep your eyes on the word. Keep your eyes on God and don't allow fear. Don't entertain fear and all the motivating factors that come with it. You will lose your focus. Amen. Amen. So they lost their focus of the presence of God who's right on the boat with them. So their focus became, got on the storm and the waves. And see, if we lose focus today and we begin to look at the waves or we begin today to look at the pandemic and the lives that are being lost and the people getting food and, and, and oh my God, am I going to starve or, or, or I don't know if I'm going to be able to pay my bills. If we begin to look at that, it will weigh us down. Remember what fear does. It weighs us down. But God said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Don't allow fear to wear you, to weigh you down. It says, do not fear for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you, says the Lord. Amen. Remember that God is still there in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of what we're going through. Remember, he's still God. He is still God. In Matthew 28, it said, 28, 20, it says, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end. So there is never a point where God will walk away from you or turn his back on you and leave you. He will never do that. He'll be going against his word and that cannot happen. So know in your deepest, in your darkest hour, in your hours of concern, talk to God. He hears and he sees every tear. Every word that you utter, God hears it. And God wants to bless you. And he will bless you. And he will strengthen you. One thing that the disciples did was they forgot about the promise of God. They forgot that the spoken words of the masters were stronger than any storm. Remember the words that encouraged you even in the past. Let them encourage you even in today. We don't want to give power to the pandemic because God has all power in his hand. He has all power. So I want you to be encouraged that it is faith over fear. You already have the ace card, my brother and sister. Go ahead and play that ace card and rest in God. Trust him because he is still God. When you speak the words of faith, when you speak God's word, it brings peace. 
into your life, into your home, into your family. When you speak the word of God, it brings deliverance and salvation to your home. Speak the word of God. Amen. Even you may be fearful. And I know there are times we all begin to worry. There are times we all become anxious. There are times we all may come and get a little fearful. But encourage yourself in the Lord. And that is encouraging yourself with the word of God. So you grab hold to your scripture and what have encouraged you in the past. You grab hold to it. Even the serenity prayer. Grab hold to the word and you begin to repeat it and walk through your house. One instructions my husband gave at the beginning of this was to anoint your house. Anoint your house. And my husband went around and anointed our house. And I thank God that no pandemic can enter in because there is angels. I can't see them, but I know they're there. They're intertwined about my house. I believe it. You do the same and believe it. And watch God take care of you. Amen. No matter what, know that Jesus is still on board. He is still on board. Your boat, no matter the storm, no matter the, 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 the winds, God is still on board. Amen? He's still on board. We look at that, that word, anxiety. Anxiety. Anxiety and worry. They Remember I said they kind of go in together. Anxiety is the body's natural response to stress. So when stress comes, it is, it's natural response is to worry. And we all know what stress does. We all know what stress does. Stress tears down the body. So it's the body's natural responses to stress. It's a feeling of fear or apprehension about what's to come. Mentally distressing concern or interest. So it comes to cause you to worry and to be weighed down. Worry is to afflict with mental distress or agitation and to make you anxious. And that's what the pandemic wants to do. Remember, the pandemic comes with an assignment. It's not coming to distract anything else but the thing that will cause to give it energy. So if you allow fear, worry, and anxiety to come, it gives it energy. God says, fear not. But let's look at this word, anxious. It asks the question, can anxiety or worry damage the brain? Now this on the science side, I want you to understand what it does to your brain physically. Anxiety and chronic stress and worry leads to structural degeneration and impaired functioning of the parts of the brain. Oh my God. So can this be a tool that the enemy is using to hurt us? It said it accounts for the increased risk of developing neuropsychotic disorder, including depression and dementia. Wow. Why the God, the God that we serve will not want us to worry and distress and be anxious so that we could have depression and dementia. It's a tactic from the enemy. So he put that out there. Because see, remember, the enemy comes but to kill, steal, and destroy. So in the spirit is doing something, and in the natural is doing something to this body. Ultimately, it's to kill you. So why worry? In Philippians 4, 6, it says... Be anxious for nothing, but in everything in prayer and supplications with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Let your requests be made known to God. My time is running out. I know I'm not going to get a chance to finish it all, but that's fine. That is fine. When we come back, we'll finish this because I really want you to understand that these three tools are weapons that the enemy used to distract and to discourage us and to keep us in bondage this day. Amen. 
Again, that scripture says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplications, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. God is able. God is able. And guess what? He's still God. He's still your God. He's still my God. And he wants to bless you. He wants to bless you. So in this hour, I don't want to leave without giving you an opportunity. If you don't know Christ, that you will get an opportunity to receive him if that's your soul desire. He's a good, good father. He's, and he's able to take care of you and keep you and keep your feet from falling. He is an amazing God. I love him so much. Because I tell you, the love of God just transcends all around us. And, and, and God loves us even in our mess, no matter what, no matter how you may look, no matter how you may think about yourself. God loves you. God, let me tell you some things I have done. And even now, I when I say, Lord, forgive me, I shouldn't have did it. That was ugly. God, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, that was out of character for me. Oh, God, forgive me. I just thank God that God have created a pathway for me that I can be washed and clean just by saying, God, forgive me. God sent his son that we can be able to say that, to die for us so that we can say that. God, forgive me. And we are clean and free indeed, my brothers and sisters. So if that is you, I desire, we don't want to put no one on the spot, but right in your living room, wherever you may be in your home, if you're in your car, if you want to receive this beautiful Savior that I'm talking about, the God of my life, the one who fathers me, I would like to introduce you to him. And if that is you, I ask that you re will repeat after me. Father God, I know that I'm a sinner. I ask you for forgiveness. I believe that Jesus died for my sins and rose from the dead just for me. Despite my sins and failures, I ask you to come into my heart and save me. Help me to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. I'm here to tell you if you said that prayer this morning that you are a part of the body of Christ and you may not hear it physically, but angels are rejoicing in heaven because you gave your life over to Christ. Amen. And I want to hear from you. Following after me, I'm going to bring up my husband and he's going to give you a way that you can get in contact with us because we want to hear from you. We want to tell you about this awesome God and the membership package that goes along with what you just did. There, Yes, there is a membership package and it includes so much great things. Oh, I promise you, you're going to be blessed. But I want to, before I leave, I want to pray for those that may have a prayer request, those that are want to rededicate, those that need a healing, those that are looking to God to bring them out, those that want to trust God, I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, for your presence. Father, we know that you are an on-time God. We know that you are a God that is able. We know that you are a God that will keep even our feet from falling, God. So, Father, right now, Lord God, teach us and help us to trust you, Lord. Lord God, we may not always understand or figure it out, but Lord God, our trust is in you, God. So, Father, I pray, oh, Lord God, you know the hearts of those that are, Lord God, looking to you, Lord God, for a touch. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that you will meet them at the point of their need, God. Lord God, that you will show up and show out in their life. I pray for healing right now to go through, Lord God, to the listening audience that is in need of a healing, God. Touch, heal, and deliver, God. Those that, oh, Lord God, that need you at this hour, Lord God, for anything that's going on, Lord God, within them, Lord God. Father, you are the God of order. You are the God of peace, and you are the God that brings joy, Lord God. Thank you for the oil 
of joy in times of mourning, God. Thank you for the garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness, Lord God. We come against the powers of darkness and we push it back. Every assignment of the enemy, the God that is trying to come upon your people. We push it back in the name of Jesus and we plead the blood, the blood of Jesus, the blood that is able, Lord God, to set free. We plead the blood of Jesus and we say, Lord, have your way, God. Have your way, God. Touch, heal, and deliver, God. We need you. We need a touch from you, God. So we say, Lord God, show up and show out. Show up and show out, God. So we choose to bless your name, Lord God. We choose to give you all the glory and the honor, Lord God. Those that want to rededicate their lives back to you, God. Father, meet them right there, Lord God. Let them know that, Father God, no matter how they look, no matter how they, Lord God, have come to this place, no matter what they have done, that you love them, God. So, Father, we give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. I'll bring before you our senior pastor, Pastor Isaac Smith. Thank you. Amen and amen, amen. He is still God. He is still God. Oh my God. Were you blessed by that? Amen. I know this is a dreary day. It's a rainy day outside, but God is still in control. He is still God, family. Uh, those of you all that that would like to get in touch with us, if you prayed that prayer this morning, we're honored. We're truly, truly honored that you Amen. would. Uh, that be that. I want you to know. First of all, there's a party going on in heaven right now for you. Yes. Amen. And this is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Amen. We didn't know that you would be watching, but God knew. We didn't. We don't know what you're going through, but God knows, and He is still in control. <laughs> One of the things that I always say is that he is always in control. Amen. Yes. Because he is still God. Still God. This morning, uh, we we thank God uh, for you. Uh, we want to tell you that uh, if you if you would like to uh, contact us this morning, if you prayed that prayer, uh, we want to ask you to uh, send us an email. Uh, feel free to give us a call. And let me give you the email address. It's nltcministry at gmail.com. nltcministry at gmail.com. Uh, Amen. And uh, our, our phone number this morning, I just want to mention it to you. Our phone number is 305-769-4444. Uh, 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 and feel free to give us a call. But right now, we want to give you an opportunity to sow into the word that you just heard. Uh, I thank God uh, for my, my lovely wife. Uh, I learned a lot. I was, uh, uh, that, that, did, that, that just did something to my spirit. This morning, if you want to sow, uh, if, you, if you go to another ministry, your tithe goes to that ministry. We believe in order. Uh, so if you want to sow a seed into this ministry, if you are a a member of New Life in the City, and you want to send your tithe or your offering into uh, into this, and you want to just sow into this anointing, amen? I want to tell you, we are good ground. We are good ground. Uh, to sow a seed this morning, uh, there are ways that you can pay, that you can sow. You can, sow. Uh, you can do so by uh, PayPal. Those of you all that have PayPal accounts, it's paypal.me forward slash NLTC, that's for New Life in the City. Uh, if you're paying by Cash App, and our Cash App address is dollar sign New Life in the City, all one word, dollar sign New Life in the City. If you're paying by Zelle, our Zelle ac ac account is New Life, I'm sorry, NLTC Ministries at att.net. Amen. Uh, we're so happy to have you with us. Uh, God is moving. Uh, this thing, I want you all to know that this pandemic, I want you all to know something that it came that it might come to pass. It came that it may come to pass. Amen. So uh, those of you all that, that's sowing a seed this morning, uh, I pray that 
that, that the Lord will bless you. But I want to pray this morning that the Lord will release a blessing into your account, into your home, into your, uh, uh, your body, your business. Amen. Father God, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for these, your humble servants, O oh God. Father God, with whom have, have you knew that they were going to be here today, O oh God. And Father, so right now we ask you to bless your people as only you know how. You are the Lord of the harvest today, Lord God. And so, Father, this morning, we ask you to, Lord God, to multiply each and every seed that's been sown. We, we believe you for a blessing in the life of the giver today, O oh God. Father, we're believing you, O oh God, that you would touch them in their bodies. Their businesses would rebound, Lord God, and be stronger than ever. Father, we thank you for our jobs some of us that still have jobs, even though we may be furloughed. But Lord God, we know that the best is yet to come. So this morning, oh God, we ask you this morning to release a blessing into the life of your people, your givers today, oh God, that have purposed in their heart that despite not being in a physical building, that they will do right by God because they believe in seed time and harvest. They believe in being obedient. And so Father, we thank you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. We just we we just honored to have you with us this morning and we truly thank God for you. This morning we want to close out and we want to just mention uh we want to remind you of our uh, our benediction scripture. It's Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Amen. We, we want to invite you to, uh, to be with us on Tuesday. On Tuesday, we're going to go deeper uh, into our book. It, the book series, It's Happening uh, by uh, Pastor William McDowell. Uh, we're in the final stretches, so join us on Tuesday. And finally, Psalm 33, verse 4. Remember, the word of the Lord is right. God bless you.